Hello everybody and welcome to the Grob Chess Club where we'll be doing a series of lessons on how to move up to class E which means rated in between 1000 and 1199 and this is something that I believe that anyone can do. So to begin our series we are going to begin with how to play chess just the basics, how the pieces move, uh, what's the goal in chess everything like that. So if you already know how to play chess this lesson is not for you, you can probably skip to the next one. Um, but just knowing these basic rules of chess should get you a rating of about 200 uh, in the United States Chess Federation. When you start a chess game, there are two different colors. There are the white pieces and the black pieces. And even if you're playing with a different color set, say you have yellow and red, the yellow would most likely be the white, and then the red would be called the black pieces. The starting positions should always look like this. Each side will have eight pawns these things are called pawns. They should always look like this. And then in the left hand corner, in the bottom left hand corner, there should always be a dark square, which will be important when we get to something later. Uh, and in that square will be a rook. And each side has two rooks. They look like little castles. Next to them are the knights, which look like horses. And next to them are the bishops. Each side has two bishops. Finally, there's the queen. Each side only has one queen. And they face each other. That's another important thing when you start out in the position. They both face, face each other. As do the kings. Each side has one king. The king is a very important piece because, in essence, chess is about trying to kill the other person's king. Now you don't actually do it though. What's going to happen is you surround it and you threaten to kill it and then if it can't move away then the game is declared over. To do that we need to attack it with different pieces which we have named before. We'll go over them again. There are the pawn, the rook, the knight, the bishop, the queen, and finally our king. Now we will go over how the pieces move. First, we will do the pawns. When pawns start out, white always makes the first move in case I didn't mention that before. When pawns start out, they have the option of either going one or two spaces. And that's for all of the pawns. So, a typical opening when you start out chess will be something like pawns moving this way. Now, pawns can only take other pieces when they are on diagonal squares in front of them. So for the white piece, he can only capture a pawn that moves to this space or if it moves to this space. He cannot take directly in front of him. In fact, this pawn cannot move at all anymore until something lands here, here, or this pawn disappears. So, if it were white to move, uh, a move he might do would be to move this pawn to forward. And now you see that black has the option of taking on this square or this square. It's also important to note that pawns can never move backwards. So, he takes the piece. And when you take a piece, you take it off of the board. So on white's turn now, you'll see that now this pawn could move forward again, if he so desired. But he can only move one this time. He cannot move two again. He can only move one now. Okay? And the goal of a pawn in his lifetime is to somehow reach, like for this pawn, it would be to reach this back row where all the black pieces are. So let's say goes like this, this would never happen. Oh. And say this pawn was able to capture here. You could then choose for it to become whatever piece that you want except a pawn or a king. And then it will become that piece. Most often you will become a queen. 
and then you'll notice you can have two queens. You can actually have up to nine queens on the board. Uh, that should never happen, but if it does, uh, you should be very proud. Um, so, it is no longer pawn once it reaches that point, and then it will take on the abilities of the piece which you make it into. Next, we will go over the knight, which looks like a horse. Remember that each side has two of them. The knight is a very special piece because it's the only piece that can jump over its own pieces and enemy pieces. So right now, the only pieces that can move are the pawns and then this knight because he can jump over. And the way a knight moves is like an L. He goes two in one direction and one in the other. Notice that, say, if this space were open, he could also go up one and over two. It's just a combination of one and two making an L. Okay, so let's say here, and let's say black moves his knight to here. Okay, and then a knight captures a piece when it lands on a square that it can go to. Say, my knight's turn, he goes up one, over two, and now you could see that if this knight wanted to move here, he can. That's how all the other pieces do it. The pawns aren't like that. They can capture on spaces that they can't go to. But the knights, since he can go to this square, that means he can capture any piece that's on it if it's not his own. So he can actually take my piece off the board, and now he has one more knight than me. Next, we will briefly go over the, uh, the bishop. Each side has two bishops, and you'll notice that they start on different colors, which is very important because a bishop can never move off the color that it starts on. So in this position, it is white to move. He can move this bishop only on these white squares. He can move it to any of them. And he goes in a diagonal. So if this pawn weren't here, say here, here, then he could also move to this space or this space. And bishops capture just like knights do. If something is in the way of where they want to land, if an enemy piece is in the way of where they want to land, they can take that piece. So if I go here, black has this bishop on this diagonal, the whites, and he can move, and he can take me. It's also important to note that you can stop anywhere along the way. So black had the option of stopping here, or move back. He can move any other piece, but if he wanted to move the bishop, he can move it to any space in between, or he could take mine. And say white could take it. And the knight move up one, over two. So that's how you capture with those pieces. And it's very important to know, it probably doesn't make much sense right now, but having pieces uh, is very important in chess. It's maybe one of the most important things. Next, we have the rooks. Each side has two rooks. And then the rooks move up and down and side to side, but not on the same move. So if it were white's turn, he can move his rook up one or up two. And if nothing was beside him, he can move over. So let's say he goes here, that goes here. Now I have the option of moving back, or now I can move side to side. And just like the knights and bishops, when something's in your way, an enemy piece, and you want to take it, can. So, we have knights making L's in any way, two and one. We have bishops going diagonal on the squares that they start on, the color squares. And then we have rooks going up and down and side to side. 